So we have this idea that some non-monic quadratics can more or less be dealt with just like our monic ones. That's nice. Okay. However, have a look at example two. You can't do all of them like this. Four, negative 11, and six. Is there a single common factor I can pull out of all of them? No. Answer no, mainly because of this guy. What a jerk. I told you they often end up as prime numbers. Okay. It'll only divide through by 11 and 1, neither of which is any use to us. Okay. So what will we do here? This is important. There's a couple of different ways we can go about this. I'm going to show you how I do it. And you'll probably think, wait, why did he do that for? I'll explain it as we go, but I wonder if you can try and work out what's going on in my head. Next line. I am going to take this middle guy here. I'm going to break it into two pieces. Minus 11k. So this is like writing minus k minus k minus k minus k minus da 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 11 times. And I can group them up in any way that I like. Right now they're just sitting in one group. I'm going to split them up into two. For reasons that will become clear in a minute, I'm going to split them up like this. Are you okay with that? I have just written this in two parts rather than in one. Minus 11k, minus 3k, minus 8k, they're the same thing, just looked at in two parts rather than one. Now having done this, I've just turned this question from one that we didn't know how to do into one that you do know how to do. Think back, two lessons. I gave you lots of questions where you had four terms in a row. What was your main strategy for dealing with all four? You would pair them up, wouldn't you? You'd say, oh, okay, is there a common factor between these two? And in this case there is, it's going to be k. What do you get left with when you divide? 4k minus Yes? Then you look at the other pair and you say, ooh, is there a common factor? And the answer is, there is. I could say 2, but in this case I'm actually going to say negative minus 2. Okay. When I take out that, what will I be left with? Oh, that's suspicious. Right? So you can see I've transformed a problem that I didn't know how to do into one that I did know how to do. Uh, I can do one more thing here. What can I do? I'm going to take out the 4k minus 3 because it's common. Take it out the front. And then that leaves me with k here. Minus 2 there. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, I'm not finished with this question yet. Remember the part that I said was a bit mysterious to you was, I chose to br break apart the minus 11k in a very particular way. I chose to do it like this. Okay. Now, why did I choose negative 3 and negative 8? Look at the very first line. Look at the numbers. Where do you see... The connection. Nathan, what do you reckon? Because they're like factors that work with 4 and 6. Ah, before, I just paid attention to this number. You see that? Uh, those will give me 24. Negative 24. Uh, these will give me 6. Uh, these will give me negative 30. Yeah, we only paid attention to the last one. But here, because this guy out the front is now an, a different number, right? It's not 1 anymore. Now you have to pay attention to both of them. Does that make sense? In fact, you always were paying attention to both. It's just that when it was 1, it didn't make a difference. Right? Uh, 1 times negative 30, still negative 30. 1 times negative 24, still negative 24. So you're paying attention to both of them. 4 times 6 is? 24. 24. So now I think of my pair of numbers. I don't think about 6. I think about what pair of numbers will multiply to negative 24. Uh, sorry, positive 24. And here are my two numbers. Why did I choose negative 3 and negative 8 and not plus 3 and plus 8? Because they're all multiplied together, they also make 24. Yeah, that's right. Well, I can use them just as easily to make 24, and also I can build them out of this minus 11k. Do you see that? This is not plus 11k, it's minus. So that's why all of these are negative. Okay? So... What you're thinking of is, remember before I asked you to write down a guide for what you do with this? You're thinking of a pair of numbers that adds to B, multiplies to C. Now that there's an extra number at the front, this is what you're dealing with. And that's why it was B and C, because the A was hiding. Okay? So go ahead and write this maybe off on the side. 
to factorize a non-monic quadratic, like ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. You still want a pair of numbers that adds up to b. You still want that. You're still looking for something that will add up to negative 11 or 9 or whatever it is. Okay. But you don't want them to just multiply to give c. You want your pair of numbers to multiply to give ac, this product. Okay. A, C. In this case, it was 24. Okay, this is 24. Okay, let's do another example and see if you can do this, um, this double thing for me. Uh, the next example I'm going to show you is, let's just do that one. So do this, have I got space? Can I rub this off? Yeah, okay. This example, yes, going, going, go on. Okay, this time, remember I came up with the numbers, negative 3 and negative 8, but this time I want you to help me, okay? So I think this starts with a 6. What does it say? W. Did I get it right? Yeah, perfect. Okay. 6w squared minus 17w plus 5. Again, these are reasonably easy, reasonably easy numbers that I think we can manage. So we want them to add up, the pair of numbers you're thinking of, we want them to add up to... Add up to negative 17. We want the pair of numbers to multiply to give... Which, 6 times 5, which is 30. Okay. So the pair of numbers multiplies to 30. Multiplies to 30. Think about your factors of 30. Far through them in your head. It's going to be... Negative 15 and negative 2. That'll work, won't it? The negatives will cancel. We'll give you these two. So let's go ahead. We'll write the next line. 6w squared. Negative 15w. Okay. Yeah, this is what I've got. This is how we decided to split it. Okay. Now we're about to find out if we split it correctly. I've got pairs, right? So I'll look at the first pair. There we go. Are there any common factors? 3 and W are both common factors. Okay. So, whoops, wrong one. I'll pull the 3 W out. What does that leave this guy with? What's left behind? How about this one? What's left behind? Now, remember, if we've done this right, we want to get some commonality as we go and do the next pair. Have a look. Is there any common factor here? Now, it doesn't look like there is, but in order to get to here, I am going to factorize something out, namely, negative 1. Because look, do you see how I've got a minus 5 here, but a plus 5 there? Oh, wait, that's not right. So if I take out a factor of negative 1, it'll switch the signs around, like this. So 2w minus 5 is an object. How many of these objects do I have here? I have three W of them. How many do I have here? I have minus one of them. This is the object. That's just this label. Okay. So now I can factorize. Right. Uh, I'll take that common factor of two W minus five. That's the object. I'll take it out. What's left behind? This is why. Even though that one doesn't make a difference, if I don't write it, it's still correct. I like to put the minus one there, because when I factorize on the next line, it reminds me, hey, there is actually an object here. There's like an extra bit along the end. A lot of students, when they don't write that, they forget to write it on the next line. Okay. Now, just to finish before you get going on those questions, there they are. Okay. Remember, we came up with our two numbers, negative 15, uh, minus 15, W, and minus 2W. I put minus 15 first and then minus 2 after. Does it matter which way we put them? Hmm. Let's find out. If I wrote down 6w squared, and just by chance I wrote down this, which is the opposite direction. Okay, so I'll swap them around. 
Can I still solve this question? Can I still do something with it? I can, right? Have a look. This time, my first pair is a different pairing. Is there a common factor? What's left behind? That looks familiar, doesn't it? What about here? Is there a common factor? Oh, it's five. I'm going to choose to take out minus five. I could take positive five out if it was convenient to me. But this time it's more convenient to take minus because it leaves me with... So one of the nice things about this particular strategy is that whichever way you go, okay, you almost can't screw it up. You'll still end up here. Question. Uh, let's fix that. There you go. Happy? Good.